So Candace Against the Universe came out last week and it was amazing and also chock full of references to the original Phineas and Ferb series for fans to catch. However, most people don't know that there are also a handful of references to the other series in the Phineas and Ferb universe, Milo Murphy's Law. Given that Milo Murphy's Law took place in the fall and winter after Phineas and Ferb, it had many Phineas and Ferb references for fans to catch, which I have cataloged way too extensively. But now, Candace Against the Universe gets to throw back to Milo Murphy's Law. So follow along with me and see how many references you caught. It's time for... What we have here is contest ready ghoul. You've seen it before, you're gonna see him soon. He's the curry raccoon. It, it. Relax, it's probably some kind of amusement park ride or it makes giant waffles or something. Is that what you're doing today? Making big waffles? When Candace first sees the alien abduction pod, she immediately assumes that it is another of Phineas and Ferb's inventions, and her guess is that it makes giant waffles. It's an oddly specific guess, but a fun callback to this gag in Milo Murphy's Law when the football field was covered in syrup. This is awful. What are we supposed to do now? Make a giant waffle. No jokes. Yeah, no jokes, Melissa. This is a very sticky situation. <laughs> Ow. Let's run those tags on the galactic web. It's from the planet Feebla Oot in the Roblox cluster. The planet the kids travel to in Candace Against the Universe, named Feebla Oot, is a reference to the phrase, to all beef, well, I'll just let Dan explain it. The ingredients to a Big Mac are two all beef patties, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun, and backwards that's nabdisa masas ano snoy no selka pasuka kurulek wa slice up sita fibla ut. That's where the name comes from, fibla ut. But because Dan likes to use this verbiage for his alien voices, it also shows up in Milo Murphy's Law. Nabdisa masas ano snoy no selka pasuka kurulek wa slice up sita fibla ut. While the translation is different, it's cool to see Feeble Oot become more than just have failed. Hello, and welcome aliens! Ah, giant robots! Quick, give them Buford! Upon stepping through the portal, Balji's prediction of needing to sacrifice Buford to alien robots seems to come true when they see Norm standing in front of them. Baljeet quickly offers Buford as a sacrifice to protect himself, and it's a really funny moment. But we know that later in the timeline, Buford gets payback. When being charged by pistachions, Buford offers them Baljeet as a sacrifice in the exact same way. What are those? Don't worry, I got a plan. Here, we offer our nerd and sacrifice. Buford! Is this a call back? A call forward? I'm not sure, but I think the word comeuppance fits. All right, I guess neither of us are aliens. But what's with your neck? Wait, wait, what's wrong with my neck? In the movie, Buford calls out Doof's neck for being strange after learning that Doof is not, in fact, an alien. This is very similar to the Phineas and Ferb effect episode of Milo Murphy's Law, where Melissa calls out how Candace's neck looks strange. Really? With that neck? What's wrong with my neck? Both Doof and Candace respond the exact same way. What's wait, wrong, wait, what's with, wrong my with my neck? neck? Stop, stop, stop! Play Chop, Chop, Chop by the Lumbers Act. Chop, 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 chop away the alien computer mainframe mistakenly plays Chop, Chop, Chop by the Lumbers Act in response to Candace yelling, Stop, Stop, Stop. The song is the number one hit single of the Lumberzack band, first introduced in the Milo Murphy's Law episode, Secrets and Pies. Putting Chop 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 in the movie meant that it got an official soundtrack release with the Candace Against the Universe album, which was awesome. But it's not the first time Phineas and Ferb characters have encountered the song. Welcome to Earth! Egg salad? Danny Jacobs' score for the movie was wonderfully unique, but he did pull a few cues from Milo Murphy's Law, as season two of Milo centered around the Octalians, another alien race, wanting to abduct him. So, Danny took the musical theme used during Milo's abduction to accompany the flashbacks to Super Super Big Doctor's Reign of Terror. One day, she arrived. And she brought with her her evil plant of doom. This piece of music also got a soundtrack release in the track Cowardly Story slash Fall Out of Ship. <laughs> That's it! We'll use the chicken replacing hitter to switch places with a chicken on Earth. Worked like a charm earlier. Come on, get on. This reference is really clever. The chicken replacinator has been brought up multiple times in Milo Murphy's Law, but the last occurrence has extra meaning now that we've seen Candace against the universe. In the movie, Doof, Vanessa, Perry, and Vlorkal use it to get off Feebla Oot and back to Earth in time for the final battle. Plus, it's also used to defeat Mawa. 
In season two of Milo Murphy's Law, when the entire cast of characters go into space to rescue Milo, Doof decides to bring his chicken replacinator with him again, just in case it might be useful. However, in classic Doof fashion, he seems to have forgotten that he used it to get home from an alien planet just months ago. Well, I did bring some inators with me. Let's see, we got the chicken replacinator and the reducinator. Hey, maybe we could shoot that at the sphere. Are there even chickens on this planet? This one is real quick, just the Lumber's Axe brand being advertised among the many other Phineas and Ferb brands on the baseball field. Another fun detail, the logo is the same from Baljeet's CD case in the crossover episode. I have your CD, I carry it with me always! Oh yeah, chop chop chop, I remember that. So this one requires a bit of context. Milo Murphy's Law director Bob Bowen created a character for himself to play in Milo Murphy's Law as a running gag. Trucker Ted would always show up in the middle of various events, making a different delivery every time, usually while on the phone with someone complaining about it. It was a really fun bit, and since Bob Bowen went on to direct Candace Against the Universe, of course Tracker Ted made a cameo. You can spot him in the stands of the baseball field as the John P. Tri-State statue is being destroyed. And his line is very brief. No, no, no. Oh. Oh, oh, thank goodness. Now, not to read into this more than necessary, although I pride myself on doing that, but I think the reason he was relieved more than anyone else is that he was a descendant of John P. Tri-State. We never found out his last name in the show, so Ted Tri-State? Come on, it sounds too perfect. And let me tell you, this is the big time. Old toilet flower here is going places. You're under attack. Oh wow, from who? This one follows right off the last one. Since Trucker Ted only got one line in the film, Bob Bowen decided to also play the alien toilet flower in the film, who has two main bits, but one of them seems very reminiscent of Trucker Ted's role in Milo Murphy's Law. Well, I'll tell you what that emergency is. Those darn riders are going with the crash truck bit again. What are you supposed to do about it? You're my agent. We're supposed to get down here and get them to stop overusing this bit. They're going back to the well too many times for Trucker Ted's comfort here. Old toilet flower here is going places. You're under attack. Oh, wow. From who? In Milo Murphy's Law, there was this thing called the llama incident. Big deal. Anyways, this llama that Isabella pets looks exactly like one of those llamas. Probably just a reused design, but still neat. This is one of Milo Murphy's Law Season 2's most infamous gags, the recurring raccoon who just randomly appears in episodes to steal things and cause chaos. He also has his own theme song. You've seen it before, you're gonna see him soon. He's recurring raccoon. He shows up in the middle of perhaps the most chaotic shot in the film, doing donuts in a race car as the animators are thanked in the final musical number. His inclusion was likely to thank Milo Murphy's Law staff writers Maria and Valerie, who were working on Milo production around the same time the movie was in early development. And because they came up with the character, and he was included in the film, they got a special thanks in the credits. It's good to know that as long as Recurring Raccoon exists, we'll always be able to look forward to seeing him soon. In the final end credits of the film, the font used is Cooper Black, which was the primary font used for both the opening and closing credits of Milo Murphy's Law. This may be the dumbest piece of trivia that I know, and Nobody will be satisfied with my inclusion of this as a reference, but at the same time, if I don't include it, someone will mention it in the comments. So, what you gonna do? So that concludes the list of references to Milo Murphy's Law and Candace Against the Universe. I really hope you enjoyed this, and if you haven't seen Milo Murphy's Law yet, give it a shot. It's right there on Disney Plus after you finish Candace Against the Universe, and it's just as funny as Phineas and Ferb. Special thanks to my top patrons, Milo Murphy and Rovanami, and welcome new patron Seabass323. Stay tuned for one more video about the movie later this week, and I'll see you next time on Phineas Flynn's Law.